My name is Lauren Conrad and I am part of the technical support team here at Software Toolbox. Today I will be giving you an overview of the BACnet communication protocol. BACnet can be defined as a data communication protocol for building automation and control networks, developed under the direction of the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers. BACnet is a national standard in more than 30 countries and an ISO global standard. Mainly used in the building automation and HVAC industry, the BACnet protocol encompasses everything from what kind of cable to use to how to form a particular request or command in a standard way. What makes BACnet special is that the rules relate specifically to the needs of building automation and control equipment. They cover things like how to ask for the value of a temperature, define a fan operating schedule, or send a pump status alarm. The BACnet Development Committee realized these capabilities might not cover all situations, so they developed the standard with a focus toward accommodating future unknown building automation and control applications. Because of this focus, one of the real strengths of BACnet is that it can be easily extended. If a vendor creates a new functionality for which communication is required, the vendor can add new properties to existing object types or create new object types that are accessed in exactly the same way as the ones defined in the standard. BACnet specifies most of the common functions in order to remain applicable to almost any kind of monitoring or control application. The main components of the protocol include objects, properties, and services. An object is simply a collection of information related to a particular function that can be uniquely identified and accessed over a network in a standardized way. All information in a BACnet system is represented by objects. The BACnet standard identifies over 100 different properties of these objects. A different subset of these properties is specified for each type of object. The BACnet specification requires that certain properties must be present for each object. The BACnet protocol defines a number of services or messages that are used to communicate between building devices. It was agreed upon that the first component in developing the protocol would be the language BACnet devices would speak to each other rather than how the messages would actually travel. BACnet provides a standard way of representing the functions of any device as long as it has these functions. Examples are analog and binary inputs and outputs, schedules, control loops, and alarms. The standardized model of a device represents these common functions as collections of related information called objects, each of which has a set of properties that further describe it. This concept allows for organization of information relating to physical inputs and outputs, as well as non-physical concepts like software or calculations. Objects may represent single points or logical groupings of points that perform a specific function. Most experts and sources indicate there are 23 standard BACnet objects used in building automation systems. Standard objects are those objects that operate within the BACnet standard. A BACnet device is simply a collection of objects that represents the functions actually present in a given real device. Each property of an object has a specific behavior. For instance, each analog input is represented by a BACnet analog input object, which has a set of standard properties. These properties include things like present value, sensor type, location, alarm limits, and so on. Some of these properties are required, while others are optional. One of an object's most important properties is its identifier, a sort of numerical name that allows BACnet to easily access it. BACnet does allow vendors to add proprietary properties, but as with proprietary objects, the proprietary properties may not be understood or accessible by equipment from other manufacturers. Here is a list of the defined properties of the analog input object. BACnet requires one device object to be present in every BACnet device. The device object makes information about the device and its capabilities available to other devices on the network. Before one BACnet device starts controls related communications with another, it needs to obtain some of the information presented by the other device's device object. Here are some example properties of a device object. Unlike other objects, the device object's instance number must be unique across the entire BACnet network because it is used uniquely to identify the BACnet devices. It may also be used to conveniently identify the BACnet device from other devices during installation. Because BACnet is based on a client-server model of the world, BACnet messages are called service requests. The BACnet protocol defines a number of services that are used to communicate between building devices. The protocol services include who is, I am, who has, and I have, which are used for device and object discovery. Services such as read property and write property are used for data sharing. A client machine sends a service request to a server machine, which then performs the service and reports the results to the client. There are currently five groups of BACnet message types. For example, one class contains messages for accessing and manipulating the properties of objects. A common one is the read property service request. This message causes the server machine to locate the requested property of the requested object and send its value back to the client. 
Other classes of services deal with alarms and events, file uploading and downloading, managing the operation of remote devices, and virtual terminal functions. Here are some examples of services categorized by their class. File access services are used to read and manipulate files in a BACnet device. In BACnet, files represent group data bytes of arbitrary length and meaning. They do not necessarily relate to any kind of mass storage device. Every BACnet accessible file has a file object associated with it. The word atomic in the service name merely means that only one read or write operation can take place at a time. Object access services provide the means to read, modify, and write properties and to add and delete objects. Multiple services are provided for reading and writing properties. The purpose of the more complex services is to combine as many reads or writes to properties of objects within a BACnet device into a single message, thus reducing network overhead. Remote device management services provide a number of different functions, including operator control, specialized message transfer, and addressing functions. Virtual terminal services can be used by an operator to establish a bidirectional text-based connection with an application program executing in a remote device. The development of BACnet IP provided not only the specification for moving BACnet messages between IP devices, but also the base for accepting other new networking technologies with a minimal impact on existing BACnet technology. If a device supports the protocol without the addition of a gateway or other module, it is called a native BACnet device. BACnet IP devices view the internet as if it were a local area network. The IP address of a device serves the same purpose as the device's MAC or physical LAN address in other BACnet networks. The protocol uses a BACnet virtual link layer in order to control all of the BACnet IP functions. This layer provides a string of messages that are used to address specific abnormalities of IP networks, including the behavior of broadcasts. The layer's control information can also be easily expanded to include almost any kind of new network technology that may surface. Therefore, a specification could be easily created to run BACnet directly over asynchronous transfer mode networks, synchronous optical networks, frame relay networks, and integrated services digital networks. This also results in heightened security and quality without interfering with BACnet's existing application and network layer protocols. BACnet IP devices can communicate with each other directly over the internet. Unfortunately, IP routers do not usually transport broadcasted messages, and so the BACnet broadcast management device was developed. These devices behave somewhat like routers, except they only handle the forwarding of broadcasted IP messages. However, this is not a significant issue because broadcasts are rarely used in BACnet. In order to access a particular BACnet network from anywhere, foreign device registration was developed. Foreign device registration can be carried out through any static or dynamic internet connection. By registering with a BACnet Broadcast Management Device, or BBMD, the workstation becomes a member of the BACnet IP network. It receives forwarded broadcast messages from the BBMD when they are available and can request that messages be broadcast by the BBMD on its behalf. The foreign device can talk with any BACnet device directly without registration, but will only receive broadcast if the registration procedure is performed. There are five interoperability areas that represent the capabilities needed by building operators to perform the everyday activities of running a building. These include data sharing, alarm and event management, scheduling, trending, and device and network management. Eventually, the BACnet protocol was developed to incorporate these areas through the use of small building blocks so that for each functional area, a specifier can select from a range of capabilities that best meet the intended application of the device. BACnet Interoperability Building Blocks, or BIBBs, come in pairs, designated A and B, that reflect the client-server nature of control system communication. The A BIBB represents the client or device that is trying to obtain information or command in action. The B BIBB represents the server or device that provides the data or carries out the commanded action. If two devices support complementary BACnet capabilities, the A and B side of the same BIBB, then they are interoperable from the standpoint of that function. The basic idea is that for each kind of device included in a specification, the functional areas they need to support are selected. Then, BIBBs that apply to that functional area are chosen to match the level of desired sophistication.
Every BACnet device is required to have a PICS, or Protocol Implementation Conformance Statement. It is basically a BACnet specification sheet containing a list of a device's BACnet capabilities. It contains a general product description, details of a product's BACnet capabilities, the LAN options available, and a few other items relating to character sets and special functionality. A PICS is the first place to look to determine if a BACnet device is compatible with a particular server. There are more than 4,000 BACnet sites up and running at this moment. A few keys to BACnet's continued success include user demand, a very flexible architecture, easy extension of object model, lack of dependence on current technology, large vendor commitment, and broad participation in development of the standard. You can learn more about BACnet and our top server BACnet Ethernet driver on our focus website, toolboxopc.com, by navigating to the driver-specific page. Under the Support tab, you can find links to videos, application notes, etc. You can also search our knowledge base for answers to frequently asked questions. As always, we are only an email or phone call away. If you need help evaluating a PICS, setting up your project, or troubleshooting an application, please do not hesitate to contact us.